Hey fellow coders, it's the Web3 Idiot back again with our newest episode on uh, JavaScript arrays. Uh, in episode one, we talked about the basic methods that we could call on an array. Uh, in episode two, we uh, dove into our first problem. And with that problem, we had to sum up all of the elements in an array. And uh, in episode three, we're taking on our second problem. So the goal for today is to find the max element in an array. So in other words, we are trying to find the element that has the greatest value inside of an array. Um, yeah, so we're gonna go ahead and jump straight into it. Uh, so basically our input will be one, two, five, eight, and uh, two again, and maybe uh, four. So the idea is that we will look through this entire array. We'll look at one, one is our max so far, two is bigger than one, so two is our max so far, five is bigger than two, it's our max so far, eight, it's bigger than five, it's our max so far, two is not greater than eight, so we still have eight, and we have a four, and compared to eight, that is not the max, so we will output eight. Eight will be the greatest value, or the max value element, in this array. Now there are a couple ways that we can go about solving this. The first one is what we just talked about. It is using a for loop. So basically the idea is that we have an external variable called current max and we'll loop through. We'll say one uh, compared to this current max which we will set to maybe a negative infinity or uh, just the minimum value that we can get to. We compare uh, one to negative infinity and we find that one is greater than that. So we update max current to one. And then we look at two. We compare two to the uh, one in the current max. We swap those two. We put two inside the current max. We do five to two, put five in, eight to five. Put eight in, two to eight, we keep eight, we move on to four. Four to eight, uh, we keep eight because eight is greater than four. And at the end, we will return the current max, which would then be the final max, and we would output the number eight. Um, as a same thing that we did in the previous episode, another way of doing a for loop is using a for each method on the uh, array. So the idea would be that for each element, we compare it to the current max, uh, which is a variable we keep outside. And if these uh, values are greater than the current max, we will replace the current max with the value we are at. And again, we would return the current max after we do the for each method on the array. Our next one is we can use another method called reduce. Uh, in the same way that we use reduce to use an accumulator, we can also use it to keep track of the max value. So we do a math.max call within this, uh, I guess, method, and we would output the final max value that remains at the end. And then uh, finally, this would be the easiest one we can do um, you probably know that you can have math max. If you put in array, you won't get anything. If you put in one, two, three, you will get something. You will get three out. You can also use a thing called a spread operator. So we can go one, two, three, and we put in array. The idea here is it takes every element out of the array and puts it inside of here. So. Uh, instead of it just being an array, it would be one, two, five, eight, two, and four. And we call math max on that, and we would get eight, and we would return that. All right, let's look. take a look at the time and space complexity. So uh, in the same way that we looked at every element for adding up our numbers, we will do the same thing here in order to find the greatest number, because we cannot exit out early. We cannot skip any numbers because we need to look at every single number because the max element may be hidden at the very end. So our time complexity for each one of these will be 
uh, O of n in our space complexity uh, for the for loop all we need to do is keep track of the variable index and for the variable of current max which would be O of 2 which we divide back down to O of 1 so that would be O of 1 uh, for each is the same thing uh, all we're doing is keeping track of the external variable and that would be O of 1 reduce uh, we don't have an external variable, but the lowest uh, t space complexity I can have is O of 1. And for this one here, uh, it also has a time complexity of O of n, but it is different in the case that when we spread out this array, we're making a copy of the array. So in that case, uh, for number 4, that would be O of n, meaning that... Uh, Methods one to three, or approaches one to three, are best if you have uh, a larger array. And number four is very simple to write out, uh, but you should only do so if you have a pretty uh, an array that's quite small or pretty small. Um, let's go ahead and write out these uh, approaches. Uh, so we'll start out with approach number one. So we we'll say function for max. And then we'll pass in an array. So remember, we need to keep track of the current max. We'll say let current max equal, and we want to set it to the lowest number we can come up with. And that is negative infinity. And then the idea here is we use a for loop. So we can say for let i equal zero, i is less than array dot length, i plus plus, or increments every time we go through this loop. And then here we say current max equals math dot max. And we pass in the current max and we also pass in array at i. So uh, the idea here is that math dot max will look at the current max that we have and compare it to array at i. And it will set the current max to the greater of these two numbers. And once we go through all the way to the end, we will return the current max. Um, again, if we look at this, we can change it up quite a bit because we do not need to keep track of our index. Index does not matter to us right now. So we can say constant, we can say number of array. And then in here, instead of array of i, we can say number. Uh, do you need to say number? No, you don't. You don't need to say number. You can say banana. All right. So constant banana of array. We wouldn't call it banana because we want to call it number or we want to be as specific as possible. But I just want to show you that you can just call it whatever you want. And at the end, we will return the current max. So we say console.log. And over here, we will do four max. And inside, we'll pass in one, four, ten, seven, two. And uh, out here, over here, we are expecting to get the number 10. So let's run it. We do get the number 10. Let's change this back to a better name. Constant number of array. Again, we will get 10 as well. So that is a one way of doing it. Our next way is to use a for each approach, which will look pretty much exactly like this except instead of having this for loop, we'll use a for each method call on the array. So we can say function, function, and we'll do for each max, and we'll pass in an array. Down here we say let current max equal negative infinity. And then down here we'll say array dot for each, and then here we can say number, we can say element, whatever you want to call it. Uh, just try and be as descriptive as possible. We'll say uh, for each number, pass it this way, current max equals math.max. We'll say current max and we'll compare it to the number we are passing in right there. So here, this array dot for each is doing the exact same thing as this for loop. And then down here we will say return current max. 
And uh, let's go ahead, we'll come down here, console.log. Uh, we will pass in uh, for each max. And inside of here, we'll pass in an array of 10, 20, 40, two, and one. And we are expecting the number 40 over here. So let's go ahead and run it. And we do get the number 40. Ah, oh, very good, very good. Our next one we're gonna look at is uh, approach number three, which is the reduce method. So let's come down here, we'll say function, reduce max, and we will pass in array. Very good. Uh, here, we do not need to have an external variable. And we will just be returning right away the uh, value that our reduce function returns. All right, so basically what we wanna do is we say array.reduce, and inside we'll do our A and B, and there we'll say math.max, and we'll be comparing A and B that we pass, uh, that being uh, the current value compared to the current max. And we'll set our initial current max to negative infinity. So this is a, a lot shorter. So just to go over that again, we use the reduce method. We get, uh, we pass in variables A and B, which represent uh, the current value or the current max value and the current value that we are at inside the array. We compare the two and we update uh, the current max that we pass forward. So uh, another one-liner, which is great with the reduce. Um, so we can go ahead and uh, do this, which would be console.log and inside we'll say reduce max and inside we'll pass it 10, four, two and 1,000 and maybe negative 10 just to show you that it works with negative numbers as well. Uh, let's go ahead, reset this real quick, and we're gonna run the reduce max function. And of course we do get the 1000, the 1000 here. So the idea again, remember with reduce, we compare A and B, those two variables representing the current value and the current max value that gets passed out of this function here. Uh, we compare the two and we pass out the max to the uh, following current value that we compare it to. And at the end, we return the final version of the current max value. All right, and then our last one here, uh, so this will be our, our worst version of getting the uh, max value of an array because of, remember, the increase in space complexity because of the spreading of the array. Um, so basically it says, uh, math max, you pass in an array and it will be similar to line 37 return math dot max. And we do not just pass in array. We have to spread it out to get all the numbers inside. And basically we're making a copy of this array and putting it inside of here, spread out. And we can do console dot log, we'll do math max, and we'll pass in the array 50, 20, I mean 50, 20, we'll do 99 and a minus 100, negative 100. And uh, we should return a 99, and let's run it. Over here we do get our 99. So just to review these real quick, um, we have our for loop, which takes every element out of this array, compares it to the current max that we set to negative infinity, which is the lowest number possible in JavaScript. And uh, at the end of the for loop, we will have the greatest number remaining inside current max. Uh, same thing with 28 to 34, the for each max, we're doing the exact same thing. We're taking each element from uh, the array, comparing it to the current max, returning, uh, setting current max to the greatest number of the current number and the current max, and at the end, returning current max. 
Uh, for 36 to 38, this is our reduce function, in which case we are using a similar way of uh, math.max, where we convert, uh, compare the current value to the uh, current max value and return the current max value into the uh, next comparison as we move forward. And our last one here, 40 to 42. Remember, only use this if your array is quite small uh, because it has a very bad compared to the other three uh, space complexity. So the idea here is we uh, unravel or spread out the entirety of the array, pass all the numbers into math.max, which then uh, looks at every number and returns the largest number. Yeah, so that was a quick rundown of four ways to solve this question of finding the max element or greatest element in an array. Uh, I hope you learned something. I hope you understand the differences between the four approaches. And uh, yeah, if you have any questions, post them below. Uh, I'll get back to you, try and answer your questions as quick as possible. Uh, thank you so much. Have a great day. Bye-bye.